Ubiquiti has just announced generation two of their UNAS network attached storage lineup with four new models that I've got on screen here. The smallest and most compact being the UNAS 2 and the largest being the UNAS Pro 8. And we're going to go through them, talk about some of the differences and what might be the right ones for you. So we'll actually start with the UNAS Pro 8 here. And I'm gonna do also a little bit of comparison to the original UNAS Pro, the one that I have just here and have been using for months and love, but I know there will be some people that are thinking, should I upgrade or what's the difference between the two? Because if we just go back to, uh, to this page here, you can see they look similar, but there are some key differences to be aware of. So this is the new, I guess, flagship model that they've released at the moment. And if we take a look at the front, we'll start seeing some of the differences straight away. Uh, at the front here, we've got now eight drive bays, 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch hard disk drive bays, instead of seven in the original UNAS Pro. That's the first thing you notice. The other thing as well is we have lost the touchscreen display that was on the original to make way for that eighth drive bay. But the real changes come in when we start looking at the back of the device. And you can see here, the first one I wanna point out is the addition of two M.2 NVMe bays, which obviously brings SSD caching to the UNAS Pro line now, which is fantastic news. I think we haven't, I haven't been able to see any speed tests and performance indicators on this yet, but it's obviously gonna bring, bring a bump in read and write speed to the UNAS lineup. So I'm very keen to see what performance looks like, but it's it can only be good news, the fact that we've got this addition here. And I think people like myself working in media and video editing and things like that, this is a very welcomed addition to the UNAS Pro lineup. The other very welcomed addition is the fact that if we look at the, the IO that we've got on the bottom here, we've got some, some great upgrades here as well. So whereas the original UNAS Pro had one SFP plus port, 10 gigabit SFP plus port, and one single gigabit Ethernet port, we actually have two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports on the UNAS Pro 8 and a 10 gigabit RJ45 port, Ethernet port as well. So three 10 gigabit ports on this device, which is really, really, really great to see as well. Now, some of the other differences uh, are really within power. So we actually have hot swappable redundant power supplies here unlike again, the original UNAS Pro. Although it did have, if I, if I just bring up the comparison chart here, uh, too many tabs, there we go. So if we look at these two columns here, if we look at the original UNAS Pro, the redundant power supply was the fact that um, it uses the unifier power backup ready, like the switching system with the USP RPS DC input. But actually on the new model, we've actually got two completely separate AC hot swappable power modules and therefore two hot swappable uh, power supply units as well for redundancy. So really, really good stuff from there. Also, it's worth pointing out if we look at the tech specs for the UNAS Pro 8, and I'm going to also bring up the tech specs for the original UNAS Pro. If we just scroll down here, take note of the original Pro's UNAS Pro's processor and memory. So the original one was a quad core ARM Cortex A57 1.7 gigahertz with eight gigabytes worth of memory. If we look at the new model here and compare it, we can see it's a quad core ARM Cortex A57 clocked at two gigahertz worth of memory. But nicely, we get a bump in uh, two gigahertz speed with a nice bump in memory at six gig 16 gigabytes as well. So that should have a, a nice bump again with performance as well when you add on top of the fact that it, the new model now has SSD caching as well, we should get a nice performance bump with the new model. So some really, really nice updates to that, uh, that flagship model, I guess we'll call it. But what else did they announce? Well, I should mention before the pricing for that one actually as well. It's coming in at uh, $799 and will be available shipping in October 2025, so in a month's time or so. They also announced the UNAS Pro 4, which is effectively a single rack version of the one that we've just been talking about, which is a 2U rack version. So let's go into that and have a little bit of a closer look 
on the UNAS Pro 4 itself. So again, single rack version, four hard, hard drive bays instead of eight. And if we look at the back here, there's been some nice upgrades here as well. So we, we actually retain two of the 10 gigabit SFP plus ports on the eight version that we were just talking about. And we have a RJ45 one gigabit port on the back as well. But importantly, this model also gets the benefit of two M.2 SSD uh, NVMe bays for SSD caching. And you've got the original DC power backup that's on the original UNAS as well, as well as AC power too. Again, this gets a little bit of a bump in, uh, in terms of processor. So we've got the two gigahertz processor here, but we are at eight gigabytes worth of memory, the same as the original. This is a really, really nice model. I think this is gonna probably appeal to people who don't need as much storage capacity, like actual capacity, but are still doing sort of the heavier workloads and can make use of that SSD caching ability that these new models now have. Now this UNAS Pro 4 is gonna come in at $499. Interestingly, if we just go back to this page here, nope, this page. Okay, let me just go back. This page here, that $499 is the same price, which will still be uh, available as the original UNAS Pro, which I believe is remaining as part of their lineup. So. It's a bit of a trade-off. Do you want to go for the original UNAS Pro where it's got seven drive bays, but you don't get things like SSD caching, those increased uh, inputs and outputs and things like that? Or go for a one rack unit that has more of the updated features, but it has four drive bays or hard drive bays. So those are all the rack units, but they also introduce two really compact desktop units, which I really like the look of, and I think are gonna to appeal to quite a lot of people. We'll start with the UNAS 4 here. And this shares many of the similarities of what we've just been talking about in the UNAS Pro 4, but in a different form factor. So it's coming in at $379. And I wanted to show you this image first. This is the back of it, and you can see we've got the four drive bays there exactly the same as what we were just talking about, 2.5, 3.5 inch hard disk drive bays. It also retains, you'll see at the bottom here, the dual M.2 NVMe bays as well. So it can take advantage of SSD caching like the models we've just been speaking about. But one thing to note on here is it does only have a 2.5 gigabit RJ45 point. There's no 10 gigabit SFP plus or 10 gigabit RJ45. I personally would have liked to have seen a, at least a 10 gigabit um, RJ45 port on here because I think this then it makes it a really interesting device for like the solo creators, uh, video videographers and things like that to offload footage nice and fast on there and work directly off the NAS. That being said, 2.5 gigabyte is probably enough for 99% of, uh, sorry, 2.5 gigabit is probably enough for 99% of people even working in those industries because I can tell you from personal testing, when I've done multiple streams of 4K multicam footage and editing, I'm barely touching that 2.5 gigabit limit pulling off of my UNAS. So this will probably appeal to a, quite a lot of solo creators, I would imagine. And it looks nice. It comes available both in black and white color as well. And I just think it looks really, really sleek. I would imagine as well, I can, uh, that in terms of because it's been designed to be a compact desktop version, it's going to have low fan noise too. I haven't heard or seen of any testing, but I can tell you with my original UNAS Pro, the fan noise on that is already basically silent. I, I have it under my desk even while I'm recording videos. But I'm sure Ubiquiti have taken into account that many people are going to put this on their desks. And, uh, and so I can imagine the fan noise on this will be pretty low as well. Any other things to mention on this one? Oh, I've missed one of the most important and I think really cool things. If I just go back to this image here, if you look at the 2.5 gigabit port, it can be powered over PoE++, so 90 watts worth of power. So if you have a, if you have a switch that can provide PoE++, 
you can power it over PoE++, which is great as well. Or, of course, you can use a uh, injector as well to power it. Um, so, yeah, really, really nice, tidy. I'm just flicking through the stats. Again, this is taking use of a quad-core ARM Cortex A55 this time, clocked at 1.7. And again, it takes a step down in the memory, down to 4 gigabytes as well. And then we have the final one that they announced. Oh, by the way, this will be shipping in Q4 of 2005. Then we have the final one, which is the UNAS 2, coming in at a whoppingly uh, reasonable $199. Almost, it well, looks the same as the UNAS 4, but obviously, as you can imagine, main difference is, is it has two drive bays instead of four, and it also doesn't have the SSD caching in here as well. It is just pure hard disk drives, uh, two drive bays for you to utilize. No M.2 slots in this model. If we look at the technical specs of this model, it can be powered via PoE++. So unlike the 4, which needs PoE++, because the max power consumption is only 60 watts, PoE++ is fine, and it comes with an adapter if you don't have a switch that can power PoE++. Same processor and same memory as the UNAS 4 as well. I just think it looks really nice. So th this model sits, this would technically be the bottom, so it sort of sits upright. If we go back to the UNAS Pro 4, this sort of as far as I can see, also does sit upright as well. I, I think it's going to look really nice on, on people's countertops and desktops. I like it a lot. So I want to end by going here, uh, actually, no, here, and show you the full lineup with the comparisons. I won't go through it all. In fact, if I scroll down, then you can take a screenshot and go through it all yourself. But... I think it's a really, really interesting range. I personally think the popular ones out of this will be the UNAS Pro 8. I think I can see a lot of people looking and getting these. And then I'm I'm split between whether people will go for the UNAS Pro 4 or the, the UNAS 4. I think those that do want, maybe don't have a rack or anything like that and just want a simple desktop NAS, the UNAS 4 is a really, really convincing model for that type of audience. Um, but yeah, I th the only thing I think that pe people might want to upgrade to the UNAS Pro 4 is that 10 gigabit Ethernet or that 10 gigabit SFP Plus port in that model. Anyway, you can compare the, the stats and the models yourself on screen now, but I would love to know your thought on this new Gen 2 lineup of the UNAS by Ubiquiti. Get your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you like? What do you think you would have preferred or what, what would you like to see in the future? Of course, this is all, all models are running unified drive. And the great thing about that is Ubiquiti are forever constantly upgrading and updating Unify Drive, adding new features, adding new capabilities. So it does make all of these models a really compelling offer. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you are new to this channel, please do me just two things. First of all, if you found the video useful, drop a like because that really helps. But secondly, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. I would love to know your thoughts on this. And if you need help with your setup, you can get in contact with me using the link down below and we can set up a one-to-one -one consulting session. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.